Hey guys, um, it's 2 in the morning, day after Easter, and I'm sitting in my closet because um, I wanted to just briefly, I didn't, I don't know, my mind's been racing, and I just wanted to make a quick comment on the burning of the church that happened earlier this week, uh, you know, on a, I believe it was Sunday or Monday of Holy Week. And I don't want to comment on, you know, any conspiratorial elements, and I don't want to comment on, you know, the symbolic element. Uh, what I really want to do is just look at the fact that even now, in the most secular of, of places, people are mourning the loss of a building that Truly, its sole purpose was to be an expression of what was the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And that that in itself, even supposedly divorced from what it truly is, just as a spectacle or as, a, as, a, as an object, is still that profoundly entrenched within people and, and draws people in in such a strong way that everyone everyone's touched by it in some way and what I think that we can take away from this is that now is not the time to mourn the death of Western civilization, but to see this as a Phoenix event, to see it as pointing everyone's attention back towards the center and taking advantage of that moment to begin to cultivate truly deep liturgical art again. The Mass itself is in fact the root of that Western culture that most people invoke. And as the root of that culture, the Mass is likewise the root of all art, all art traditions from that. Now, you may say, oh, no, well, like, there were influences from many places, and yes, there were. But those influences were contextualized and integrated into the Mass, and that's why they're there. That's why they're enshrined within those cathedrals and whatnot. And, uh, I mean, that's where the beauty of it comes from, the diversity and all, and all those things. But, ultimately, the root is the Mass. And the Mass is the event that takes place in the cathedral. The cathedral is just simply an architectural protrusion of that event. And so is the music, and so are the icons, the iconography, all of that. If we value those things, and, and the morality and the things that extend from it, if we value those things, as Christians, this is actually a call, I believe, for people to aspire to create high art, to create liturgical art. You, you probably, if you're watching this video, you probably know who Jonathan Peugeot is. Uh, he's already doing this. And I believe that not everyone has to do it. Um, but that is the way to rebind our culture and is, and it is to find the root and that is the root of so-called Western culture. There are many times that I still feel, and maybe I will create forms of art that are not liturgical, that are not aspiring to that central root of culture. However, 
those will be bound to something. And if you're not careful, you'll bind it and then therefore proliferate a sort of cultural meme that you don't want proliferated. The danger of that diminishes as you move up the chain towards creating a more pure, um, intentional art specifically for the mass. There are those people who are still working within a tradition that extends back to older Western ideals. And that's, you know, that's fine. However, I think that they will find that they uh, will remain more or less irrelevant. And I mean that not cuttingly, but simply as a matter of the times. The times are changing. They're changing rapidly. The only way I believe to stay relevant is to stay close to that center. And I think if we can create a strong enough central uh, high art, then the lower, more popular arts can flow outwards. They can sort of, you know, if you want to think of a tapestry or something, they can sort of work their way outwards and be relevant all the way down. Returning to the root is the way to rebind culture.